Some people would say they want to be nurses or astronauts or whatever. I never had any idea what I wanted to do. I may have said be an engineer because both of my parents were engineers, but I honestly didn't know what that meant. It was just like, oh, that is a thing I can say that I want to do because my parents do it. My name is Tracy Chow and I am a software engineer. A few years ago, I published a post on Medium calling for just transparency on diversity data, not actually expecting that anybody would release their numbers and was very pleasantly surprised to see not just small companies starting to talk about their numbers, but large companies like Google publishing holistic diversity data reports. Even if people didn't intend to make me feel out of place because of my gender, there's always just a, a little bit of this feeling that gender mattered and that it was cute or interesting that I was a female engineer. I don't know what it was about Pinterest, but I didn't have that feeling when I joined. And it wasn't something I could have articulated before. As a little kid, I didn't have any strong feelings about partaking or not partaking in Silicon Valley. Both of my parents were actually software engineers and they worked in tech companies, but it wasn't glamorous back then. Uh, none of the perks like these days with gourmet cafeterias and food everywhere. My sister and I would play with cardboard boxes and the free AOL CDs when I was in second grade. In my elementary school, we actually had a computer class where we were doing very basic programming where you'd have a little turtle on the screen and you could have it draw things, so stars or circles or squares. So that was probably my earliest memory of writing instructions for a computer, and I messed up many times in my calculations, but when I could make it work, it just felt so magical that the computer had done exactly what I had wanted it to do. I entered college not knowing what I wanted to major in, so I tried a few different things and ended up majoring in electrical engineering. I don't even remember what time of day it was or what time of year or anything like that. Part of being an EE lab was that you were in this closed room with no windows and had no sense of the outside world. So I just remember being in this lab, we're working on some assignment together, and we were talking about what we were going to do after the undergrad, if we wanted to do the master's program, and I had been saying that I wanted to do potentially this business master's at Stanford. And my friend said to me, I will lose respect for you if you do not do a technical master's, because you can do it, you just don't believe in yourself. And so you said, you should do either electrical engineering or computer science for your master's. And by this point, I knew I didn't like EE. We were not having a good time in this lab. And so I figured, EE is out. I can do a CS, computer science master's. And so it was almost this dare that caused me to sign up for the CS master's. My friend, he had a good sense of what I could do. And that was not clouded by the same imposter syndrome that I was feeling, um, where I didn't believe in myself and didn't think that, that was going to be a field for me. Um, so he pushed me into it because he felt that I could do it and it would be fun for me. Probably my biggest successes have been in helping to scale Pinterest to where it is today. I was part of a very small early team and the product had a lot of traction and it was growing, but it did take a lot of engineering work to get it to where it is now. Pinterest was the first place where I walked in and felt like I was treated as an engineer and not a female engineer. And that was one of the most mind-blowing things because having been in school and going to industry events, I never felt that I was so empowered just to go do awesome stuff. I think it's totally okay to not know exactly what you want to do. It's hard to even know what opportunities will be out there. Um, for example, the iPhone didn't even come out until 2007, so if in high school I had said I want to build iPhone apps, that wouldn't have been even possible. With all these different new services like cloud technology and open source software, it's made the barrier so much lower so that more people can participate. Now any, anybody in like a college dorm room can create an app and lots of people around the world can use it. I think I'm a part of a very broad community and 
There's a lot of people who are working on issues of diversity and inclusion in tech. Sometimes it can be difficult to work through being one of a minority in the field, but just remember that software is an incredibly powerful tool and it's worth sticking with because you can do so much with it.